this method is going to be called sign analysis because we're going to analyze the signs of our function, okay, at certain points. All right, so the thing is, what we're going to do is draw a number line, okay? And we have, we're just going to plot our roots on there. Remember, we found negative 6 and positive 1, right? So we're just going to plot those guys on there. And then what we're going to do is take test points, they're called. That's what I call them anyways. But test points um, in between these intervals, so such as negative 7. So anything less than negative 6 for this interval here. This one is uh, an interval, and this is also an interval. So in between, I, I always like to pick 0, you know. Um, and then how about a 2 over here, okay? So these are like our test points again. So we're going to pick test points, okay? So let me write that in there. Pick test points, alrighty? And by test points, I mean we're going to plug these guys, these test points that I'm underlining right now, negative 7, 0, and 2. I'm going to plug those into our polynomial and see, okay, at each of these points, at negative 7, is our function or is our polynomial positive or negative? At 0, is it positive or negative? And at 2, is it positive or negative? So we can basically just determine the sign of our function at each on each of these intervals. Okay, so if we look at our uh, our polynomial here, we have 6 minus 5t, which is not that legible at the moment, minus 5t minus t squared. So let's plug in our negative 7 first. That's a fun one. So 6 minus 5 times negative 7, and then minus uh, a negative 7, but squared. That's going to equal 6 plus a 35, and then minus um, a positive 49, which will turn out to be negative. Okay, so what we're going to do now, once we plugged in our test point of negative 7, we're just going to write down the sign of our answer. So negative. So this whole interval, whenever t is less than uh, a negative 6, it's going to be our function or our polynomial is going to be negative. Okay? All right, so let's try another test point. Let's try our 0. That's always a fun one. So we have something like this, and that's definitely going to be positive. Okay, so we can write a plus sign right here inside that interval. Okay, so we have this interval here, and it's going to be positive there. Alrighty, and lastly, let's just try our 2, our positive 2. So positive 2 minus positive 2 squared. So this is 6 minus 10 uh, minus 4, so that's definitely going to be a negative, right? So we have another negative interval over here. Okay, so what is going on? So we have that, well, so on the interval, this one right here, we wanted to find, remember, um, we were looking for when is this greater than or equal to 0, right? So we know that this thing is equal to 0. This whole thing is equal to 0 when we have t is equal to negative 6 or positive 1. Remember, we found that on the last slide. Those are our zeros. Okay, so these ones are included in the t like range kind of thing or interval, as is the interval in between them, right? Because that's what we found from our sign analysis. We said, okay, when we plugged in a test point of zero, we got a positive value for our polynomial. So that means inside, in between this negative six and positive one, our polynomial is going to be greater than zero, okay? So ultimately, our answer is going to be t is in between, so less than um, or equal to a one, and greater than or equal to a six, okay? So this is going to be the domain of v of t because this inequality holds on this interval, okay? Alrighty, one last concept um, is that we can go backwards. <laughs> and what, what does that even mean? Uh, we can go backwards. All right, not, not with reference to um, the previous problem or the most recent problem, but just in general with the process of like graphing uh, polynomials and things. So what I mean by backwards is that if we're given if given um, horizontal intercepts, okay, and the behavior of the graph and behavior um, near those intercepts, near them, we can write an equation for the graph, okay? We can write equation for the graph or for the polynomial, okay? So the thing is uh, that it has the form f of x has the form of um, a, some constant. It might be just 1 in front. But remember that one that one example we ran into and our, our coefficient for the entire polynomial was a negative 2, right? So that was a little bit different than uh, a positive 1. Anyways, 
So it's going to look like this. X minus something. This is an x-intercept, right? That's one of the roots. That's the whole form that we see. And then P1, that gives us our multiplicity of this root, okay, how many times it occurs. It also tells us how the function behaves right right near this x sub 1, that, that root there, okay? And then we also have times x minus x sub 2. So just in case we have a second root and it has a second multiplicity there, dot, 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 x minus x sub n, and then p to the n. Don't mind the uh, the whole like notation here. This is just super formal. Um, we'll do an example of this so I can show you guys how to uh, exactly go backwards. Okay, so they give us uh, this graph here and we're supposed to write a formula for the polynomial function. So the first thing is to note, okay, so we have a root at negative three, right? So we could say, okay, so we have x equals negative three. That's a horizontal intercept. We also have one at two, so x equals 2 is another one, and at x equals 5, okay, x equals 5. So now the next step is just going to be, okay, let's study what goes on, what the graph looks like right around uh, or each or near each of these horizontal intercepts. So I'm just going to draw a little box around each one, okay, so something like that and like that. Okay, so at negative 3, we see something going on like this. It looks like that, right? That looks pretty linear to me. I don't know about you, but it looks pretty linear. So that means that our multiplicity is going to be of 1. It's going to be like, it looks like a line, basically, right? So, wait, not not that one. Anyway, so we're, what we're going to have is x minus whatever our root is, and then to the 1 power. Okay, so that's going to characterize that part of our root, or that part of our uh, polynomial. Okay? So another way you could rewrite this is x plus 3 to the 1 power, or you don't even have to write it at all. Okay, so now let's look at the second box. So we have x equals 2, and our graph looks like this there, right? It, it kind of just faces downward, right? And this looks like a parabola, like an upside-down parabola, right? So this is going to be x minus whatever our root was, so that would be 2, and then it'll be to the uh, second power here, okay? And now let's look at x equals 5. So at x equals 5, uh, our graph looks like this, okay? It looks pretty linear right there. It doesn't, like... Um, make an S shape or anything fancy like that, right? So this again is going to be a linear one, so we have x minus 5 to the 1 power, okay? So if we squish these all together into polynomial form, we're going to get something of the following form. A, again we don't know the coefficient, we can't just say it's a 1, okay? So A times, then we just squish all of these together. So we take this guy, so x plus 3, we multiply it times the next one that we found, Okay, so x minus 2 squared, and then finally times the last one that we found, the last grouping there. Okay, so then an x minus 5. All right, so now your question might be, okay, how do we figure out this a thing here? So you, what we're going to do is just take any point, um, take any, any uh, non-horizontal intercept point, point, and uh, plug it in. Plug it in to find A, okay? What do I mean by non-horizontal intercept? I mean, don't pick this one right there, don't pick this one, and don't pick that one, because it'll just give you an F value of zero, right? Um, so let's pick, usually it's it's easy to find uh, the Y-intercept, um, a.k.a. this one right here. So our Y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 2. So this is like our x and this is like our y, right, or our f of x. So let's plug that in on the next slide and see how we can solve for our a. Okay, so we have f of x is equal to a times x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared times x minus a 5. And we're going to try plugging in this 0 comma negative 2 to figure out a, right? So if we plug this in, we get, okay, so negative 2 is our f of x value. a, we don't know but x is going to be 0. So that's a nice one because I was like plugging in 0, right? So something that looks like this, okay? And then uh, let's just simplify a little bit. So on the right side we get, well on the left side we have negative 2. On the right side we just have a times 3 times a positive 4 that is and then times a negative 5, okay? And this over here, the negatives can cancel out, okay? And then uh, we just get that a is equal to 2 over 3 times 4 times 5, 2's can cancel, and we get 2 times 15 on the bottom, so we get a is equal to 1 over 
30, okay? And see how that's definitely different than a 1. So we can't just assume we have a positive 1 in front of our, uh, that can't be just automatically the leading coefficient, right? So if we plug this into our, uh, the formula we had for our polynomial before, we can finish off this problem. So ultimately we get f of x is equal to a is now 1 over 30, okay? And then we just rewrite the rest of what we had before. So this x plus 3 times x minus 2 squared, and then times x minus 5. And that is the process of uh, so-called so going backwards, um, given your horizontal intercepts. Okay, so that wraps up the section on graphs of polynomial functions. I hope that helps, and uh, I'll talk to you in the practice problems video if you watch.